Mr. Darren, how you doing, my friend? Cruff, it is a pleasure. Does everyone call you Cruff, or is it once you love them, there's another nickname? Um, it's usually Cruff. It's usually Cruff, yeah. Well, Cruff, so congratulations on signing with Universal Music Canada. Okay. How long did you have to keep it a secret that you signed with, you know, you am the biggest label in the world, we could say? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um... I don't even know if I can answer that question, but I'm going to answer it anyways. It was around, the conversation started around November last year. And then we finalized everything in February. And people are finding out now, which is October, end of October. So yeah, it's been a while. So what I learned from that is you're good at keeping a secret and you're a very good negotiator. Yes, absolutely. It's all about the business, you know? Did you always know that you wanted to be on a major label? Because these days, it's not the dream of every artist. Some people just want to call their own shots. Right. Um, for me, I never really had it in my mind to sign. Like, it wasn't something, it wasn't a goal of mine. I think at the end of the day, I was like, let, let me just make the music. A friend of mine named Trevor has a saying that good music always finds a way. Mm-hmm. So that was always like my intention, just make the music and whatever happens, happens. So when the opportunity came, I didn't have an aversion to it. I wasn't like, nah, I'm gonna stay this or that. I was just like, it seems like, this works right now it seems like this is what we're meant to do so let's go down this road and also i've never been signed before so you know i want to try a new experience right so you're signed to tough gang which is signed to universal is that how it works uh, yes yes okay how did you with umg so how did the connect to tough gang happen in the first place um the connect with tough gang happened sadella caught wind of my music sadella marley and she was very interested. She liked it. She liked how different it was. It was experimental of the sound that she's a part of that I grew up on, you know, reggae music. And yeah. she wanted to, she wanted to invest in that. She believed in it. And I, I'm very appreciative of her for it. Do I have it correct that you moved to Canada when you were 18? I moved when I was 17. But 17. Close, close. 17. The reggae scene of Canada. I have to admit ignorance to it because I'm in New York. What is the scene like overall? Is it, you know, mm-hmm. biggest in say Toronto or is it big everywhere in Canada? I would say it's biggest in Toronto. I would also say that I kind of feel like it comes up in moments of the year. It's not, it's something that you kind of have to look for. Like obviously up here in Canada, people are listening to a lot of pop and a lot of country and a lot of folk. So you kind of have to dig for it a little bit, but I do see it making some moves and growing more and, I'm glad that I can make a little contribution in that. Where's your home base in Canada? Oh, my home base is London, Ontario, but I'm moving between London and Toronto. It's like a two hour drive. So sometimes I just hop in the car and find my way over here. And then direct flight to Jamaica? Uh, Direct flight, it's a four hour flight. (laughs) Okay, four hour flight, got it. So are you, you permanently are in Canada or are you just a citizen of the world at this point? Because let's face it, reggae is one of the only genres where it, everyone is, loves it around the world. Like there's great festivals in Japan and Australia everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm open to the world. I want, I want to see more of the world. I've only been to, I've been to Africa once. That was the farthest I've gone from Jamaica and from Canada. Well, I'm, I'm trying to go to Japan so bad. Any excuse I have to go over there, I'm there. Well, tell UMG Japan that you need a meeting and maybe it'll happen. So I understand you will have your full-length album out through Tough Gong and Universal in 2023? Absolutely. That's the, it's going to be an EP, actually. Okay. Yes, sir. So is it one of those things where you're writing 40 songs to pare it down to like five? Well, we had the foundation that we started with before we signed. And now it's just more so adding on to that. And then, yeah, just narrowing down the decisions and being like, all right, this is what we want to kind of like execute a vision, send a message, but also like give people something that they can groove to. So I'm not going to say too much, but we're working hard over here. Okay. Where are you working on it? Home studio with a producer, are you allowed to say? Ooh, okay. You know, there's two studios I work out of. The first one is Smooth Music Studios. It's run by my friend Smooth. Stephen Potasnik is his govy. Um, his his go. His, his, go- <laughs> I had his government that. name. I got it. That's great. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, man. He's a really great friend of mine, and he's he's been a part of the King Crop sound since day one. 
So I really appreciate him and I have to sing his praises. And I've been working out of the studio that's here in the UMC building. It's called ADA. And I've been working with amazing engineers like Mixed by OTR, Justin Melly. I haven't worked with Phil yet, but Phil's a legend out here. So I'm trying to get that done. And I worked with um, Trevor as well, who's been doing great. He ran a couple of six sessions for us last week that I can't talk about yet, but some sick things are coming. So it sounds like you're going to have three albums of material by the time this thing is coming out. <laughs> you know, Darren, I don't like to make promises I can't keep, you know. <laughs> so ultimately, you mentioned you want to hit the road, you want to go to see the world. But what's going on right now? Is everything about making the EP or are you also able to tour while you're working on the EP? Um, we haven't had much talk about touring. There's been a couple shows, a couple one-off shows that I've done. I did a school night here at the Drake Underground the other day, and that was a really, right. that's probably been like one of my favorite performances so far. I've thrown shows in London, Ontario, like a bunch of times. And the last one I did was this one called Family Ties at the Rum Runners venue. And that was really good. That was a really good look for the hip hop community down there. So it's, it's a balance between doing shows and being in the studio. And hopefully when we get all the material out there, you know, the road will see us. Well, speaking of hip hop, you won best hip hop uh, artist at the Far City London Awards. If my research is correct. Absolutely uh, correct. Does that change your life in any way, taking an award or an honor like that? Because calling someone the best mm -hmm. and getting a trophy, that's got to be a cool thing. You know what? If I could go into it. Um, London is like my second home and I've, I've contributed a lot to the community. Um, it's funny because I've been nominated like three times. So that one specifically, I was like, yeah, they're not good. Like I went and I was like, they're not going to give it to me. You know, it's okay. Like I prepared myself. Um, so I didn't really, it wasn't, it didn't hit me until I actually held the award in my hands. And it's, it's a, it's a small thing. I don't like to give too much attention to accolades like that, but it made me feel like it was a proper full stop on the journey, the long journey that I had in London um, transitioning from Jamaica. It made yeah. me feel like I had done a lot of work and then this was the moment because immediately after that, I think we came to, we came here to Toronto and we started doing shows and started doing sessions out here. So it was kind of like, that was the transitional point, you know? Well, where in your home does the trophy or the award go? <laughs> it's on, it's on my, my dresser, my chest of drawers. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not the first thing that somebody sees when they come over your place. No, I hide it. <laughs> oh, that that's very interesting that you hide it. Is that a modesty thing? Oh, um, I think it's just, <laughs> it's going to sound weird, but I think it's just, I like it when I walk into my room and I see it and I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's mine. <laughs> Would you say that that's the biggest career accomplishment so far, or is it signing to Tough Gun? Man, the biggest career accomplishment, um, that's, I think it's one of them. I don't think I'd say it's the biggest. I think, I think the school night one was really big. Mm -hmm. um, performed opening night at the Bob Marley exhibition here in Toronto. That was really big. So it's, we, we, we've been collecting the moments, but I don't think there's one specific one as of yet. Cool. But shout out, cool. shout out UMG, shout out UMC, you know what I mean? <laughs> When I was a kid back in the olden days, it was pretty much album tour, album tour, album tour. And now we see that it'll be like EP, album, three singles, deluxe version of the album, three singles, remix, remix album. There's really no blueprint to what a star artist does these days. So in your case, are you hoping to do the album tour, album tour thing? Or will it be the kind of thing where it's the same time we'll see you on six people's singles while putting on your own albums every year. I feel like for me, I still want to go the singles route. That's what I was doing before I signed. I feel like I still want to take that time to give people just pieces, you know what I mean? Get them mm -hmm. comfortable with Cruff. And then when the time comes and there's that, there's that, yo, we need the project. You know what I mean? Like I want to hear people saying it. And then that's when we'll put it out there. And then that's when we'll go on tour. Right. In the case of Justin Bieber, for example, you know, between albums, he had Desposito, is, if I'm correct about that. And it's his number one single, and it wasn't really targeted toward an, an album. It's just single, okay, album, you never know. And I'm guessing that's 
because he's always recording, he's always collaborating. For you, it doesn't sound like you need an album to get in the studio. No, nah, man. Like it's Andre 3000 said something the other day in an interview, and it was um, he said, I don't feel good unless I'm creating. And that really resonated with me because when I'm outside of the studio, that's when I'm in the studio, that's when I feel like I'm doing the most work. Hmm. You know, so when I'm outside of it, I feel the the opposite of that. So I literally just look for any excuse. Obviously, I take my time to rest because I feel like rest is very important. You know, in this day and age, a lot of people are like, no, you have to work, you have to grind, duh, 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 duh. and obviously you do, but not to the cost of your health. So I try to um, set that time to create, and I try to set that time to rest. Hmm. Uh, you just mentioned Andre 3000, who I, I've read is a big influence on you. Now, he said that he needs to be creating to feel alive and vibrant and all that. But hasn't he only put out like two albums in the last 11 years? Don't remind me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I guess there's probably an unreleased archive of Andre 3000 to be found. Yeah. Yeah. My, it crosses my mind at least like once every couple of weeks. I'm like, Andre has music that he hasn't put out and I have to deal with that knowledge. I know it's out there. <laughs> Is he a universal artist? I, Arista, BM, maybe he's a Sony artist. So enough plugging him. Uh, who, who on the Tough Gong label are you friends with or do you hang with? Um, at the moment, at the Tough Gong Collective, I'd say the closest person I am is probably Skip. Hmm. Yeah, Skip. Shouts Good out company. To things. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I, I, I'm not close with Skip. One day, one day we'll hope here. So, so bringing it back to you here, when you're not busy creating music, where does your time go? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, that's a really good question. Every now and then I have a decent <laughs> to good question. Not often. I think you've been killing it so far, Darren. <laughs> um, what have I been doing recently? It's been a lot of music. Mad, so that's why I can't think of any answers. But you know, I do like you know, I like going to the bookstore every once in a while. Yeah, even if I don't spend any money, but I generally end up spending money when I go there. So yeah, Indigo, they they got my money right now. But I love going there. I love buying books. I'm a really big fan of like um sci-fi, fantasy. I love comic books, like anything with that idea of imagination. Um, just finished watching House of Dragons, so that's an idea of like what I'm into. Yeah, yeah. I, I figured from having a song called Samurai Chop that you were an anime person. Absolutely, yeah. Got it. Yeah. When you're writing, is it usually life experience or is it the art that you're watching and you channel yourself? Um, it's a little bit of both. I'd say it's mostly life experience because when I go into the studio, I immediately think, what am I feeling right now? And I try and put that into words, you know? That's, that's really where I draw my inspiration from. Um, definitely if I listen to more music, I'm, I'm making more music. Uh, when I used to write stories, it'd be how much I read. And then I'd be like, yo, let me start writing. That's why I had to stop reading so much because <laughs> I wanted to put more focus on the music. So definitely there's a, there's a balance between those two. Hmm. Well, down to the last two questions here, because you've been very generous with your time. Question one, what's your favorite TV show of the moment? What the moment? recommendation yeah. do you have? Mm, yo, I think I think it, yeah, we just we just finished House of Dragon. Yeah, and I think that was the most recent thing that captured my attention. Yeah, it was a really good prequel, really well done. Obviously, it's off of the base material that um George R. R. Martin already put down. Mm -hmm. So it's it's like accurate, you know what I mean? So I really appreciated it. Right. Well, the last question I got for you, and this might take a second here. Now when you sign a record deal, it's mm -hmm. not the end of the rainbow. It's the beginning because the journey, you have to put the work in and then you're going to have to do all the interviews where you answer the same five questions over and over and over again. And you're flying and you're touring. It's work. Mm -hmm. When will you feel like you've made it in your career that you're established? Do you have a specific goal or marker in your career for that? That that is a very good question. Um, I don't think I don't think I do. I see myself working hard and hard until I I feel like satisfaction is something that people chase down for a very long time, and I kind of just put it out on my head the idea of being satisfied. You know, I I feel like it'll come when it comes. I will say that I just watched the um the Kendrick Big Steppers mm -hmm. um live stream, 
on Amazon. And that was like, okay, you know, I feel like if I got to that point, I'd be feeling pretty good. But, you know, that's that's a goal. But, but when I get there, I'll see if I want to do more, you know? Well, I'm looking forward to the next single, the EP in 2023, the tour, everything that's to come. Thank you so much for your time there, Croft. Okay. Genuinely, thank you very much, Darren. I appreciate it. Outrocast. <laughs>